This is a podcast of Nathan, Nat and Sean. Let's go. Hi, everybody. G'day, team. Hello, sailor. If you're, you think your relationship's flagging, we have an expert on today who's going to yep. help you out. Yeah. It was really interesting. Oh, no, it's really. It's pretty funny. I got into it. And we talk about partners' dumb ideas, which I've never had. No, Sean, <laughs> sure, you're the smartest of all of Thank men. You. Um, Sean n- has never eaten a chip in his life, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, so basically, Sean lies. Oh, I was attacked. Sean lies. A bit of attacked. outrage last yep. night for Sean, too, because... Um, a restaurant expected them to pay a fee for, I'm not sure what. It was extraordinary. Turning up. Yeah. Basically turning up. Amazing. Um, Sean says some terrible things about young girls that own, own horses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nathan Morris. A bit of... You're talking in front of your mum who's seen you say that before. Mum attacks Sean and then she attacks Ross. Isn't that right, mum? Well, if you deserve it, you cop it. <laughs> 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 AFLW G- GM Nicole Livingston joins us for a bit of a chat about Pride Round. And Brendan Julian joins us as well. There's a bit of cricket about to happen with the T20 World Cup kicking off. Yeah, you'll hear me doze off in that one. It'll be great. <laughs> this is Nathan, Matt and Sean. Tell you what, ladies, working out of how to control a man. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, where's the instruction book, Luke? <laughs> You know what I mean, Sean? I know, it's so hard, isn't it? Unbelievable. Very complicated, aren't you? Yeah, Yeah, pack of animals. I wish there was someone to give us a guiding light. Um, There is. Her name is Margarita Nazarenko, and she's a life coach, and she's got some great tips and tricks like this. I'm going to give you seven reasons why if you want to get married or have a long-term partnership but he's not proposing to you or not taking it there. Reason number one is that you've let your feminine energy run dry. You're given too much to everybody else. You cannot exude that beautiful, amazing feminine energy that you naturally possess that the masculine craves. Mm. Now, that's oh, not the entire just... grave. You need to go on to her TikTok. Margarita. Yes. To get the entire um, uh, list of tips. We've got it right now, Margarita. Hello. Hi, guys. How are you? Hey, We're lady. Wonderful, Margarita. I, I did. <laughs> I, I'm looking forward, and I'm not trying to be rude straight off the bat, but listening to that makes me want to drive my car into a pole. <laughs> Sure. I know. Feminine it, it, energy. It does. All this stuff. Oh, come on. Just but you be like nice it when Megan, when Megan brushes her hair and gets all dressed up, don't you? She looks lovely all the yes. time, Natalie. <laughs> see? See, that's what you see. You give those you give those compliments out straight away. Who knows what's coming back my way this afternoon. Let's hope the kids yeah. aren't home. Yeah. Does, do, do you get a lot of resistance from men, Margarita? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Yeah. You know the whole feminine energy thing? It makes me want to drive my car into whatever as well. But it, it's what makes people listen. That's the thing. Yeah. It just makes people, like, lock in and listen to you. What I'm actually saying is, like, logical and kind of just makes sense. But people like the woo-woo language. And mm. then they're like, yes, I finally get it. But if I just presented it simply, it would just they wouldn't listen. Water this is how back. people are. Margarita, um, I uh, really loved a couple of your bits of advice um, and I'd so. like you to go into them a little bit mm. more. Right. Mm. Uh, especially do you know, n- knowing how to make your man happy and also knowing how to make him miserable. Tell everyone what to do. Go. Well, listen, like people have been married to a guy for like say five, ten years and they're, and they're writing to me asking me, what do I do? He's, I don't know, writing to another woman online and I'm like, Babe, you know him. You know how to make him happy. You need to figure those things out. You need to know. You're living with this person, not me. You know what makes him happy. You know if it's food that motivates him, as stupid as that sounds, or like time with you, or if it's, you know, time in the bedroom, whatever it is, you need to make him happy, number one. And once you've done that, and he's still persisting with his behavior, you know how to make him miserable. Like, people don't have consequences these days. Like, oh, I've tried everything. Have you really? You know him. You know how to make him suffer. So That's right, Margarita. You've got the ultimate power, the power of the uh, JJ there, and you just hold that back, and that'll make him miserable from day one. Are you know what? Mate, Sean, some guys, are, you know, some guys at the VJJ, I mean, they might have another VJJ around the corner. You need but to that's know, why I say you've got to know the guy. Yeah, you like, need maybe to know. he doesn't care yes. about the yeah, VJJ anymore. You've got to know his uh-huh. kryptonite, Sean. Exactly. Oh, now so you got to know your to partner. Go. You got to study your partner, really, don't you? <laughs> Margarita, what about when they're always coming up with these like grand ideas, and you're like, oh, I have to cross you straight oh again this and is, tell him how stupid it is. This is the one. one that that this is the magic one. Okay. <laughs> there's a lot of women who, and I know this just from experience, who think men are just intrinsically stupid, <laughs> and I get it. I get it. Okay. But then well, I'm looking at one. I know. They're looking at me. I'm feeling, I'm feeling yeah. the pressure right now, Margarita. I'm in the middle. I know, right? The men are in 
look at all the things they've created in this world. Everything we're driving, everything that's happening, they've, they've managed to do it. So, like, just believe in his ideas. And even if they don't come to fruition, he will feel so amped up by the fact that his family and his, like, unit believe in him that maybe some great things will happen. But you can't always go to your partner and be like, nah, that's dumb. You're dumb. What are you doing? I just, I just think you know, positivity always works mm. better. And okay. also, um, I do love you've given a time limit on a stupid idea, and um, that is five days of the life I mean, of one of these ideas. Have you ever, have you ever had an idea, and then people are like, yeah, I'm sure you can do it, and then you kind of just feel satisfied by that, and it just. You know. <laughs> so say yes, say yes, and within five days, the stupid idea will die. It does. <laughs> have you ever tried to make something happen? Yeah. yeah. Oh, we, have no, effort. we have no follow through. Yes. We have so, no so follow through. So we embody that. Yeah. But it was like sure. one day, um, uh, Dad was driving home from Korean, right? And then on the side of the road, uh, Dad was like, oh, my God. And he got home and goes, Mum, there's a boat. There's a boat for sale. We could live on that. <laughs> <laughs> we could put that down at Hillary's boat home. We could live on that. So, so Margarita's saying you should just go along with that. Yeah. An idea. Yeah. Like so, so, yeah, so, so say live on a boat, right? So, so, so yeah. okay. Someone's, uh, my dad's done that. What happens next? What do you do? There you go. Yeah, good idea. And then he feels <laughs> good about himself. He's like, wow, I'm so loved and supported. Let's say day two comes. Yeah. He's still on it. Okay. And you can, you can ask him a question. You can be like, oh yeah, which boat? Like, wh- where are we going to go? Yeah. And he's going to say some local area. And you're like, why not the Mediterranean? And he's like, oh my <laughs> oh, God, oh, maybe. Yes. And then it just builds into something. I don't know. Maybe if, if he does do it, it's going to benefit you as well. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so Margarita, so then maybe go, so, so do you sort of get him off, the, wean him off the boat? So then do you go like, well, actually mooring fees are pretty expensive yeah. and it's really hard why to get we, one of them. Why but, don't we do but, it in a house? But you were talking. <laughs> about the Mediterranean, that would be exactly. a really great... You see, you're, you're getting it. It's so good. And like so next minute... Why don't we just sail around sport. the Greek islands for a bit? Yeah, yeah, in, yeah. A, in a boat that we rent. Yes. <laughs> exactly. And then at the end, you're like, you see, babe, your idea. <laughs> <laughs> Margarita, I feel that this advice you're dishing out works for both sides because I think yes. sometimes this yes. is, there's this dance going on between the two of you. It's to, just human nature, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, just to feather it each is. other's, you know... Behinds, if you like, um, just I to try to, yeah, get the right You get outcome. so much further with, like, kindness and humanity and just understanding who you're with. And there's, like, this battle of who's going to get the upper hand. But really, just, you know, you can get more with, uh, what's it, honey than... Yes. Yep. Everyone's got know. an angle, haven't they? Um, hey, Margarita, so you're with the fella and, and you guys are very happy. Yeah. Um, and we hear a magician oh, no, should hold never... hold on. Are they very happy? That's you just... Yeah, they are. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we, I, we, I try and be happy. Happy yeah. is a big term, yeah. you know. You know what I mean? Yeah, but we um, always hear that a magician never reveals their tricks. So, um, yeah, you're, you're sort of telling him how you're controlling him. Does he get it, or is he not? Like, do you know? Do what, you know what, what? Do you know what the magic is? What? The guy's never like listened to anything on the radio, read anything, or he's just <laughs> not, not tuned in. Just, what does he think you do for a living? <laughs> he has no bloody clue. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, no clue. <laughs> And then he's not. I'm like none of your business, babe. I like, <laughs> talk to women about stuff. But then he doesn't care, and no. he can live his happy no, life. And Margarita yeah. says the stuff, oh, having yeah. all these grand ideas that never come to fruition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Did, uh, Margarita, can you see it. that he does the same back to you in any way? Look, Feathers I think your nest? men do it a lot more. Men yeah. do it a lot more than women realize. We're sneaky. Men are very clever. Yeah. Mm. Come on, men always do. Baby, you look great. Yeah, everything you're doing is great. The food you made is great. Come on, men are very, very good at making <laughs> their partner feel good. I've got a mate just, like this, Margarita, and he always gives yeah. me advice. Exactly what you're saying, oh, mate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and um, I <laughs> fail to follow it through most of the time. <laughs> Try yeah. it. Yeah, I, Margarita. Someone's um, wanting to. Uh, someone's been waiting to get married for years, um, yes. and their partner keeps putting off um, the marriage or the engagement. And one person wants it, the other person doesn't. What happens? What What does that mean? What do we? What What, are, what happens? Well, it's always the guy who doesn't want it, right? <laughs> I mean, have you ever have you ever I heard have, it the other way around? I have heard of it the other way around, yeah. but it's rare. It's, it's, it's rare. rare. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's rare. But but people don't like ownership over that. How did you get yourself in this situation? It's either the fact that you already chose someone who doesn't believe in marriage, then why did you start living with them? What, in hopes that you're advertising yourself within the marriage-style relationship will get you married? I mean, Stop every it. girl thinks she, she can change a guy, even if she... No, if can't. Done, not, I know, we know we can't, but they think yeah. they can, and that once they've had a taste of the magic of living with, with me, then you want but to also, marry me, right? But also, what's the incentive, though? You've already given everything uh, that you're already in, in the marriage package, yes. so why is he going to marry you? Oh. Oh. Obligation? Obligation? Well, no, I just say that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
Uh-huh. Hey, can we edit that part? Isn't that right? <laughs> <laughs> if we're going to be such... Resentfully. Oh, um, yeah, all exactly. those words. <laughs> you know? If we're going to be such independent women and women talk about, oh, we're independent now, why are you living with everybody? Live independently yeah. by yourself and then get married when, when if, yeah. if you want to get married. Now, you don't have to get married. Yeah. No. But a lot of women want that. But yet they're living with first guy, second guy, third guy in order to just have one of them marry her. It's a bit ridiculous, to be honest. What do you guys think about two people just settling for each other? Like, so you're equally settling, going, oh, Where you going? You're, you're a bit meh. I'm, oh, you're, you're a bit fine. meh. Oh, you're why fine. not? This will do. This will <laughs> yeah. be. What do you think about just two people settling, equally settling? Is that okay? <laughs> I, I, I love a bit of settling because some of the expectations are ridiculous. Like, things like height. Do you know that women oh, yeah. only swipe right 4% of the time? On, oh, like, dating apps, really? 4%. Really? What do guys do? Guys, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, her, 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 her. The guys are chucking point. just, like, chunks of meat in the water to see if they can get any nipple. <laughs> you make a good point yeah. in that people uh, with, with apps, they're absolutely only going on appearance. So it's that, that initial exactly. first photo, isn't it? Half the time they don't even look so, at the extra photos. No, but it's like, okay, so he's tall. Okay, so he's kind of handsome. Okay, so he's got a job. But... What, what are the values? Like, yes. what are his values? Then you're living with him. He's not marrying you, but did you even yeah. check his values before yeah. that? Yeah. I'd rather short and wants to marry me than tall and has no idea of what he wants in his life. I we, said no to going know. out with someone because their name was Lionel once. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been the best Lionel that anyone's yeah, come across. Yeah, I mean, very good looking, like really charming. Oh, what's your name? Lionel. And I'm, nah. <laughs> um, back then I didn't I realise how alone I'd be. <laughs> <laughs> You could have been happy by now. So you said oh, with the oh, man, Me and Lionel oh. and an owl written on a tree. Oh, well, Margarita, you've won us over. <laughs> yeah. Sure, oh, sure. you won me over. Yeah, I think you're great, yeah. Margarita. Everyone, if you want to Thank follow you. her, um, uh, Margarita Nazarenko, uh, check her out on TikTok. Um. <laughs> the TikTok. Yeah. The TikTok. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed talking to you. All right. Thanks, see you, Margarita. Sweetie. Bye, honey. Whatif.com is all about helping Aussies make the most out of every trip. Book a hotel, flight, surfboard and snorkel all before you can say brekkie buffet. Jump online or on the What If app and get started. What If? It's Aussie for travel. Oh, we're just laughing about how much we enjoyed speaking to Margarita just then, the mm, life coach. We did. Um, and some of her tips were just brilliant. Mm. Um, the one that I just really, I, I loved the most that she had to say and that is to, um, you know, uh, support a man's stupid idea because mm. most of them have a lifespan of five days. And you gave the very good example of Brian wanting to... Yeah, live on a boat. Yeah, live on a boat at Hillary's. Yeah. And then <laughs> that like, he saw on the start. He saw the yeah. boat on the side of the road. Yeah, and then like, so day one, they're, they're Googling boat living and day two, they're, they're like, you know, maybe checking out more info. Mm. Day mm. three, you know, the, the, the idea is sort of... Yeah, yeah it's waiting. And then, and then he's, don't, don't bring it up. Don't bring it up. But you've day supported five, it. he's moved on to something. And yeah, that's day right. Day five, he wants to, um, you know, buy a pod home. I do like <laughs> the fact that you threw in the spanner in the works by taking it overseas. Let's go yeah. in the right, Mediterranean. Let's go and, then. Yeah. And so that way it sounds like you're pumping up their idea and yeah. then if they drop it, it's of their own yeah. accord. Mm. I do have to Rather say, Rather than you going, that's stupid. I do have to say, I do think that, I do think partner stupid ideas aren't just for a particular gender. No, no, no. No, no, no. Both women and men. And men and women yes. can have very stupid ideas yes. and sometimes your partner has to go, oh, my God, not another one. What's your business idea? <laughs> what yeah. are you importing to yes. sell down at the market? <laughs> You're not going to make 10,000 candles <laughs> in a weekend. Yeah. Um, whenever we travelled overseas, my ex and I, we would he would go, let's buy a house here. Mm. And then he would go around and find the most falling down house in the yeah. neighbourhood and say, how much is that? Look how cheap that <laughs> yeah. is. It's like, yeah. And we're then doomed to come back here every every holiday ever after to renovate. That's not my idea of a holiday. No. The Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. We are talking about when your partner has a dumb idea. We spoke to uh, relationship expert Margarita Nazarenko who told us that we should encourage our partners when they have a dumb idea because um, they're going to forget about it after five days anyway. Yep. <laughs> and that way they think you support their dreams rather than crush them. So we're about to hear about a lot of dumb ideas. Hi, Leah. Hi, guys. Good morning. Good How morning, are you Leah. Right, Leah, Leah, was this your dumb idea or is this your partner's dumb idea? Look, I have to say it is my partner's and still to this day, about two years deep after the idea, I still give him shit over it. Okay. Right. <laughs> right. Can't let's wait hear to it, hear, let's it. hear it. All right. So, my partner had this wonderful idea after watching some sort of renovation show on Netflix about flipping uh, vans into some sort of camper van. Yeah. Yes. And yes. I thought, you know what? Like, let's give it a go. We're going to try and use that nomad life on our days off because we were actually mining. 
Yeah. So I thought, okay, like, how bad can it get? I didn't overly support the idea. I thought, you know, you don't have any experience in flipping a van, turning it into a camper, but mm-hmm. okay, let's, let's go for it. I had a little bit of an inkling that it wasn't going to work out. So he invested in a van. I think we spent about $8,000 originally to buy the empty shell. Oh, yes. you bought it? Spent, yeah, we bought a van. We bought an empty van. We flipped it. We, I think he spent about one year flipping the van, and I think we ended up spending every month. I said to him, I'm like, okay, how much is it costing us now? How much? He goes, don't worry about it. It's all good. So I thought to myself, all right, how much worse can we get? So we planned a massive trip for my birthday, first little van trip down south, down Margaret River, Buffington, that sort of region. Yep, yep. We're getting the van two hours into the trip. It broke down. <laughs> Twenty twenty thousand dollars later, this van that we had, yeah, guys, twenty thousand dollars. So we get halfway down to where we're heading. It breaks down. I'm freaking out. I'm losing my cool over this whole situation. He's like, "It's fine. I'll get a mechanic to look at it." So we got a mechanic to look at it. He's like, "Basically, you're up for about another fifteen thousand dollars to fix this van." <laughs> the whole engine's cool, <laughs> but he said it's yeah, all good. The whole engine. <laughs> Pardon? He said it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Don't worry about it. So, till this day, I still hang shit on him. We ended up selling it. We lost about $20,000 on this bed. Right. So, that's the thing, Leah. Like, yes. uh, we, oh. you know, we talked about This is one of those rare, rare examples where we actually follow, follow through, through with it. Oh, yeah. you've got to like, really kill the dream before it gets right. to the purchasing <laughs> stage. He was supposed don't to you? Speak, forget about do? it after five days. Can you get that answer oh, from her? Because God. there's going to be a point in time there some people. People might yeah. keep pushing it. Yeah, well, exactly. Thanks, Leah. David's mm. in Beach for a hello. G'day, g'day. g'day oh, guys. Hi, David. Did so you... was this your stupid idea, David, or was it your partner's? No, it was my partner's at the time. This yeah, was about probably. seven years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were both studying at Curtin, and one of those speakers came in and talked about the wonders of uh, travelling abroad, or studying abroad, shall I say. Yes. And uh, she, was, she was like, yep, we're going to study in Japan for a year. Um, you should come with me. It'll be good for us. And I'm like, I, I have no reason to study abroad. <laughs> um, I was just, like, I had no reason whatsoever. So I was like, I oh, will entertain it. We'll look at, you know, like how much it was going to cost and what we could study. And I wanted to be a, like an international negotiator with like a business company. So she said, well, you can do some sort of education degree because it will help you present yourself better or um, yes. present your points. And then the language oh, skills maybe. would help too. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and, and so she's like, look, you, you'll learn how to yeah, better articulate yourself. I was like, oh, yeah, maybe. Four months later, we're, we're on a plane to Japan. <laughs> oh, there's another one uh, that followed through oh with that. Oh, my God, David, I can't wait to see how it panned out. Well, it, it was a little bit better than the last caller. So we ended up staying there for a whole year. So yep. A whole year we were there for. Uh, uh, I ended up doing part of an education degree. She was doing some linguistics thing. Uh, long story short, I found a career out of it, which was awesome. I'm actually now a teacher. So when I came back from that trip, I ended up uh, switching to a teaching degree and now I've been teaching for five years. Yeah, right. And, 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 and you're, not with her, you're not with her anymore? Well, <laughs> so I found a career. She she found a new boyfriend. So <laughs> oh! about, <laughs> about it's a win-win. The trip. <laughs> yeah. Japan and, uh, has everything, I hear. <laughs> and sushi. <laughs> well, yeah, well, she, so she lives there now. She's married. Wow. To I got an invitation to their wedding. So, wait, there's oh, that's nice. so you went over there. She met him while he was over there and broke up with you while you were over there? Well, luckily we weren't in the same classes. But, yeah, that's basically how it happened. <laughs> David, Dave, you should have been listening to Margarita's job? advice. So you just on. facilitated her going over and hooking up with someone else. <laughs> okay, David, upon reflection, is your current career better than the relationship that you had with her? Uh, you know, honestly, yeah, I can probably say that. Okay, good. Case, All right, yeah, that's, that's a win. Great. I'm not that mad about it. Yeah, that's okay. great. All right, that's great. That's great. That's great. That's oh, how's your Japanese me? schools, David? Um, yeah, so-so. I can, I can speak a little bit, but we don't actually teach Japanese at the school I'm at, so mm. it's pretty much just progress very quickly. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I use it for just swearing, basically, at this point. Okay, yeah, no, that's good. That's, he that's, needs that's what he needs. He needs yeah. He's got what he needs. Got what he needed. California roll. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. It's fun. It's Thanks, shame. Dave. Nathan, Dad and Sean. All right, we've got some more of partners who have dumb ideas. Danielle's in Yan Hello. Hey, how are you going? Danielle, we thought we were going to be talking about a graveyard of ideas that yes. never came into fruition, but we've just gotten to that actually became real. Um... 
whose idea was this? Okay, so this is my husband. He is the like epitome <laughs> of impulse ideas. Yes, Over okay. the years, we've bought like a go kart, a motorbike. Like <laughs> he's he's the type of guy that goes camping near a dam and goes, let's buy a boat. Yeah, um, yeah. and I just kind of go, yeah, sure, and wait for it to die out. So stop. exactly what Margarita <laughs> was talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, By the sounds so of it, his moment, ideas don't die. No. No, they don't. They oh, they really no, don't. But up. that's because yeah. he doesn't he doesn't wait that five days. Oh, <laughs> okay, right. No. Straight away. If he has an idea, it's happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to squash it right at the very beginning or else it's happening. I, I don't even bother. You don't even bother. You just let him do it. <laughs> All right. Okay, what example have you got for us, Danielle? So so we're actually in the midst of this at the moment. Um Back when we got married, he desperately wanted to go to Vanuatu for our honeymoon, yeah. Yeah. which I was very against because he'd been there with his ex. Oh, wow. um, and I was like, you can't take your, your fiancé or your, you know, your yeah. new wife to yes. a, somewhere that you've been with your ex. Uh, we ended up going and he had this brilliant idea to buy a block of land over there. I, I, I so I was like, I, I did this whole five-day thing and I was like, yeah, maybe. You know, we um, entertained her. We went and looked at properties and then got back. And kind of was hoping it would just die, yes. and it didn't. It didn't. So we are we are <laughs> thirty. Well, we're about we're about forty forty five days out now. Yeah. Um, we're heading over to Vanuatu to yes. build a tiny home. Oh are my you god! Really? Oh, what does what does a block of land in Vanuatu cost? Uh, thirty grand. We've got a mortgage on oh, it. Oh, oh, it's very decent. Is it a but, lease um, thing? Like a hundred year lease? Like yeah, in so Bali, it's like a. Yeah, it's a ninety-nine year yes, lease yes. Um, yes. for an acre of land. And you got so, and you're just going to have a, a, one of the tiny. Those you're going to build a tiny home, and then Airbnb it or something. Uh, so currently, we have a forty-foot container on the block, which yep. is going to be our tiny home. Yep. Um, and there's also a twenty-foot container which got sent over literally just before the pandemic. That is full of everything we need to build. So it's got cement mixes, it's got couches, it's got what? soak wells, it's got cement, <laughs> everything in it waiting. To build this tiny home, and then once that's empty, my plan, if if I get a word in, um, I would like to yeah turn these twenty foot containers into like yeah Airbnb cabin type thing. Yeah, generate some income. How much by the time that your tiny home is done, do you think that project in itself would cost? I've I've stopped calculating. Oh no! So in the order of, are we talking two hundred grand? Are we talking? Oh no 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 nowhere near that. Okay, like it's obviously yeah yeah. Like maybe maybe fifty, maybe fifty. Um, so so you're thinking but, maybe but fifty. So blow that out to eighty. And telling everybody you've got a, a house on a tropical island like I mean, uh, Vanuatu. That's oh, bloody I've impressive. Got, I've got family all signing up to to come holiday. I've never yes. been to Vanuatu. How would you describe it apart from being you know very islandy? Uh, so islandy. The yeah, that's the way. Word. Yeah, the best way to kind of. Um, like in terms of atmosphere, it's Bali twenty years ago. It's oh, very I laid back, that. very relaxed. Um, non but yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, but in the in the midst yeah. of all of this, yeah. um, like I was talking, I think it was with Amy about how we're funding this. Yeah. So my husband, in in another one of his brilliant ideas, quit his job back in April oh. <laughs> um, to become a content creator on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? Is it funding it? Uh, He's, he's got 100 subscribers. I think he's got something like 1,000. Oh. You have to have 1,000 to even, like, get a look in at monetizing. Can we get – let's get him some what's more. His, what's his what's YouTube his channel? Uh, so his YouTube channel is DIY Daddy. Uh, or actually, no, sorry, it's, it's – sorry, it's Z-A-C, Zach. Z-A-C, yeah. D-A-D-D-I-Y. Yeah, D-I-Y. D-I-Y. Zach Dad D-I-Y, basically, yeah. D-I-Y. Yeah, so Zach Daddy. YouTube. Yeah, Zach, Zach, Zach okay, Daddy. everyone, so That's Zach amazing. Daddy, so Z-A-K-D-A-D. D-I-Y. D-I-Y. Um, give, they need to pay for just, this. They just, need to pay for an island time. Just follow for Danielle's <laughs> sake, for the love of God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me, give, me a, give me a laugh. Right. Oh, Danielle, thank you so much. That was highly entertaining. You're listening to Nathan, Nat and Sean. Last night I went out for dinner 
And I ate a massive schnitzel. Oh, and I ate a massive, and apparently on, had no chips. Apparently had no chips. Anyway, okay, keep before, going. Before I had so no we're telling 2410 lies. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable lies. Oh. First of all, well, it was for my nephew's birthday, right? And my sister-in-law had organised it and it was we're going to this place that we'd been before, which is yes. a restaurant, and they have things for the kids to do there, which yep. is great. So uh, last time we were there, we had a great time, and um, she thought, that's an easy kill. We'll go back there again. Everyone can fit in. Not a problem yep. at all. So, How many people are we talking? Uh, What's 25. Matter? So there's 12 <laughs> and 12. There was only – I mean, we're missing a few. <laughs> okay, yeah, right. Just um, this is quite McManus to yeah. get together. So anyway, um, when uh, – I was on my way there. I, I got – Megan told me – Mrs. told me that um, – because I was running late – that we had to go to another place and they changed – Oh. Changed the restaurant that we were going to, and I when I got there, I was asking my sister in law why uh, we'd moved place, and it was a nice yeah. place. But she was told when she rang up and booked the original joint that we'd been to last year mm. that she would have to pay two hundred dollars. Well, as, as a, a deposit. deposit. No, she said, "Oh, if that's a deposit, yeah, I'm happy to pay two hundred dollars." Yeah, and then they comes said off no the bill. because there's so many people we're charging you a booking fee for the space. Like you're, what are you hire, about? Like you're hiring the venue, like a venue hire, yeah. Are they but, insane? But, but you were going to be ordering food. You were going there for dinner. We are going there for dinner. So you were spending dinner. money. So, no, so, so dinner. you rock up, you all rock up there, right? Yeah. You all rock up there and they're still charging the $200 to be there. That's what they said. At a place said. where there is an like, 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 entry fee yep, to get yep. in like a nightclub. You're not getting this money back is, is what was said. And she, uh, the girl on the other end of the phone, in fact, said, "What you can do is pass. We can pass the uh, two hundred dollars around to all the paying. Oh, customers. just split it between we'll everybody. Split it between you. Oh, all. So, no, but, that's, so, but that's not. So would they have done that as a service fee? Is this is this them no. trying to flag a big fat service fee? No, they they said it was for because there were so many of us that they were counting it us as hiring the venue, like no, no but, one else. But can how big is the, the venue? Place. Uh, last time I was there, it easily fit 60 to 80. All well, you were hiring the venue. You didn't have exclusive use of the venue No, we didn't then. have exclusive use of the venue. It then, wasn't roped no. off. No, there was, no, you just hire, you just get a top. No, you booked a high, table. High you booked table. a table. Yeah, that's, that's, it. Table. Yeah, that's, it. that's it. The kids run around, they go and do all the activities So if your available. sister-in-law said, okay, and I uh, hung up and then called back and said, I would like to book um, four tables of six, please. <laughs> 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 would that have been? I guess they would have got over the line, but I've never heard that before, no. ever. Well, that's ridiculous. $200 just for showing up. Oh, yeah. God, you know just what? Just for showing up. Everybody. The amount a of group. money that you were going to spend there, yeah. oh, and they out. turned that away. I'll tell you right now, everyone listening is going, where was it? <laughs> <laughs> where, they're screaming, okay, okay. tell us where it was. It is next to Adventure World. Right. That says say everything. Anymore. Is it that red rooster on the corner? <laughs> oh, really close. No, they, uh, well, I mean, look, they're if, never if going, going to. you down past Adventure World, it's just on the left. Okay. They're never going to get a group of people there. And what idiots. I know. What, what would you do? Because that the, 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 is that illegal? A, a large group of people like that, they're spending a lot of money. Yeah, we've got a lot of it's mouths guaranteed. to feed. And I mean, granted, lot, I'm not going to eat the chips. chips. I'm just going down the I get around. putting a deposit down. It, yeah, yeah. If you have a large group yes. of people because, coming, yeah. I get putting and, a deposit And if they cancel down. and don't turn up, then you absolutely yeah. deserve to take that deposit. Agreed. Absolutely. Agreed. Yeah, there's no question about that. But taking that just as a, a fee to allow you to come in is ludicrous. Yeah. You take it off the bill. That's how that works. Given that we weren't, as as they were saying, like a venue hire, we weren't taking up the whole area. No. And there was a lot more people that come and in. And you weren't as, demanding as to. As per happened before. You were just booking no, no, tables just, at just this so restaurant. Just so we could go along, the kids can run around and everyone eats. Which which is how it was before when mm. you went there last yep, time. 100%. Oh, wow. Oh, well, we're never going back there and try the whole week. A, a pack what? of idiots. Mm. Um, uh, it's unbelievable when someone tries to charge you something mm. and then you're like. Hang on, wait, for what? No. <laughs> Has that happened no. to you? <laughs> yeah, you're, that, trying, that. Like, you're trying to charge me that. Harry told us the other day, Harry, how much were those bloody chopsticks on over week? Uh, 20 cents. 20 cents for chopsticks. <laughs> they should be free. No, no wooden things. There is That's not a reasonable. security guard. When I go over to the road at the sushi shop, there's not a security guard standing there making sure you take one set. I could take a whole handful if I wanted to. <laughs> They've got soy sauce over there for free. Oh, you've got all yes, the soy sauce. because they don't put it in the sushi they anymore. They don't put it in the sushi mm. anymore. So you can literally go there and just like yeah. empty it into a backpack and like walk out. Like, I mean, are you serious? 20 cents. Yeah, and I have been taking advantage of the free soy sauce across the road as well. And, I, and, I'd, and, I'd, and I'd understand if the chopsticks were like, you know, four metres long, but uh, no, and, uh, it's a bit yeah, cumbersome for yeah. them. Oh, yeah, it's a bit of a service fee. Service fee, yep. 
It's about a balsa wood. They're, they're the lightest wood of all the woods. <laughs> lightest wood of all yes. the woods, they say, Harry. Nathan, Nat and Sean in podcast form. Imagine a restaurant getting a booking for 24 people, so 12 adults, 12 kids, and saying, you know what, you're going to have to pay us $200 just to come because hmm. that's a big group. It's not a deposit. No, no. It's not going to come off your bill. No, no. You have to pay because there's that many of you. And you don't get exclusive yeah. use of the yeah. venue. No, no, no. You share them no. with everyone yeah. else. It yeah. happened to me last night. All right. And so when they say that to you, you go, no. <laughs> Tracy's in Midvale. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Hi Tracy. Trace. What did something try and charge you for? I, I had to pay, well, they tried to charge me extra for um, not having vegetables in a Chinese um, dish. Or one of those like yeah, dishes fry. that you, you can... You can pick the one, the few you want that's already in the Bay Marie. Oh, your large combination. Oh, oh large yes. combination. Yeah, so yeah. it's like eleven dollars ninety for the small one. Yes. And then if you didn't want the, the dish in there that was just vegetables, they'd pay. You'd have to pay an extra dollar. Uh, you have to pay a dollar to get less of something. But presumably they're taking it up with more of another yes, dish, right? Putting, yeah, they're he- putting the price heavy. up just because you didn't have the plain vegetable. Yeah, because the veggies are cheap. Yeah. Okay, so is Natalie correct? And then they're putting more meat in there instead. Or they were just taking the vegetables out. So if you got lemon oh. chicken and sweet and sour pork and noodles and a vegetable dish, they didn't put the de- vegetable dish. They put more of the other stuff in. No, no, no. So like, um, it was what? already prepackaged. Yes. No, no. no they um, you, you got your choices, and yep. then they said, you know, if you want, do you want that dish there? There was just nothing to it, plain vegetables. Yeah. And I said no because there's you know veggies in the other dishes. Yes. And they go, oh well, if you don't have the one with just veggies, it's a dollar more. Yeah, because they're filling the container up still with the other dishes. Well, that, did they say it that way, Tracy? That they'll put in more of the other dishes to to fill it up? Isn't Natalie so the, the, the container? Well, they just full left at it out completely. It. Left it out completely. This is what you get, but we're charging you more. Well, I'm um, sure that's the tricky one. She asked what I wanted first, and then I told her, and then she said, "You know, do you want this one with the, the just the plain veggies in the dish? Nothing, just the dish of no. veg, plain veggies." Yes. I said no, and she goes, "It'll be a dollar more than." If you don't have the plain veggies in with what you want. Yes. Well, I mean, look, whether yeah. they fill it up or not, it's a real punch in the face of veggies, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, it's mostly celery too. In those like, you know what I mean? Like, like, like here they are, we live in a world where people say eat more veggies and then you find out that you, you, that you say no to veggies. And, um. <laughs> yeah. Look what happens. You get yep. charged. Yeah. And we all learn a valuable lesson. Thanks, Tracy. Adriana, hello. Hi, how are you? What did you get charged Adriana? for, Adriana? Uh, well, in South Africa, we had my dad's 60th a couple of years ago, and we hired a venue that was max 60 guests. Yep. We were about 56 people, and then we asked them to give us waiting staff to serve drinks and food and whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because they were giving us 10 waiting staff people, we were over the 60 max, <laughs> according to them. <laughs> so they that wanted to count. <laughs> no. So they wanted to give us the bigger venue, which was... Double because of yeah. their staff numbers, <laughs> because of their waiting staff that you have to use. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So, why don't so they did just you ask for, like, okay, we don't want those 10 staff, we want five really good ones? <laughs> <laughs> no, we negotiated and I got my way in the end because I told them that's not how it works. That is but it took a while funny. for them to understand. <laughs> that's oh, amazing. They were just taking the piss, weren't they? They were, absolutely. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, it doesn't count. You can't say this. That yeah. many guests yeah. include okay. the staff. Yeah. 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 Outrage. Okay, so no, take nine of the staff away and we want one gun. One yeah, that's right. One gun. Or, or one, just like <laughs> four, one man or one woman short. Four quite short ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Adriana. Ashley, hello. Hey, guys. How are you? Hey, good, Ash. Right. Good, what Ash. did someone try and charge you for? That was outrageous, Ash. So I had a 2006 Hilux, and back on those Hiluxes, like air conditioning was optional. Yeah. So I had I had my car in for a service, and you know, like halfway through the day, they'll call you up and they'll be like, "Oh, you know, you need this work done in your car." Yes. Um. So they called me up and they were like, "Your car needs a new aircon belt. Do you want us to do it?" Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Really? It needs a new <laughs> aircon belt." And so I kind of like had a bit of a laugh and I led them on a little bit. I'm like, okay, so what was the condition of the belt and everything? <laughs> yes. Anyway, and then eventually I was like, you do realise that the car doesn't actually have aircon, right? <laughs> what did they say? What did they that? Yeah. They said they were like, oh, 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 um, oh, it must have been one of the other belts. So they tried to charge me for an aircon belt that I didn't even... You like, never had an aircon belt. Yes, there was no way to put it. You might have just worn it around a nice blouse. <laughs> That's outrageous. That is that outrageous. You hear sometimes um, that happen along yes, the journey. Yes, well, a, a lot. A lot. Yes, yeah. yeah. They, 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 you know, but not doing? that obvious. 
Like, I mean, you at least <laughs> at least say it's something to do with the coolant. My favourite thing is when you get your car service and look, and, yeah. I, and I've, I trust mine. We, yes. I take it down to Auto Masters and they're absolutely amazing and know the guys. But when when they're reading all the stuff that you need to get done or that you've had done, you you always got, yeah. Yeah, yeah like okay, you know yeah, what they're it. talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you literally tell them down. anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, well, yeah, okay, yeah. well, that's good. That got done. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know any of it. They're <laughs> talking Chinese to you. Yeah. This is a podcast of Nathan, Nat and Sean. Little health kick McManus enrages me. <laughs> you, 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 you. You come in here and you eat your little tiny lettuce leaves. Mate, yeah. I, I yeah. told you I put the foot down. Last it's night, time. what did yeah. you eat? I had a hat to, had to have a palm. You did, you you did it. I ate it with salad, and You're I did not have the chips. And you that is a true so. story. You, a true story. Hey, you are a liar. That is. Oh it, mate, I swear at you. Right chi- now. Nathan's chip. looking at the menu. Also, he reckons a chip did not pass his lips last night. My brother that had chips come out shit. early. He knew I was starving. He said, "That is a load of chips." Chip. Everyone's just hoing into the chips. I said, "No, but oh, no." Okay. I'm not. I'm, so Sean goes, "I had to have a palmy. I had soda water with lime there, just like lunch. I had to have. I had to have a palmy because there was nothing else on the menu. I put up the menu." Menu. Chicken satay salad, seasonal salad. Well, there's nothing on the nothing on the menu. Did you see that the, de- the salad was deep fried? Boom! You, didn't <laughs> <get that>. <laughs> you <laughs> are. Uh, mate, I'm telling you. No. Look at me. Look no. at me. I did not. Today have, I'm having rice paper rolls for lunch. I did not have a chip. Is the biggest lie of that 2022. That is a true story, mate. Honestly, the girl came up. She said, "Are you finished here?" Absolutely. No. It was a pile. It was a mound, Natalie, of chips. Liar. You believe me, don't you? Liar. That's <laughs> oh, a true story. No way. Sorry. Once there you are ate chips a for the table. The size of your head. No, chips. there was. You there was are chips known for the as table. chips for the table, McManus. Whenever there are chips on the table, he always, Nelly, when we're at br- breakfast, oh, every time. Our, I said, don't order chips. We're at the big I ordered order chips, chips for the table. Yes, yeah, so that's how we know. You and didn't I said, order chips, but once they were in front of you, you yes. could not, you have oh. no resistance. Hey, buddy, chips for the, the table. table. Sean goes, what are you getting chips for the table for? And eat some all. Nathan, Nat, and Sean podcast. Wow, what is that at me? What a beer. Oh, yeah, she was attacking you. She was, Marlene Morris just age shamed you right in your face. Jeez, mate. She moisturised more. She's nice. Remember when she was? Remember she was a nice woman. Remember that? No. Dad no. Does that. <laughs> Actually, tell you the truth. Wait, who wants a nice woman? Hey, no way. Ross, you don't remember when she was a nice woman, do you? Ross isn't ready yet. We haven't gone to the news yet. Are we? Are we? Am I on? Yeah. No, I know. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 we're dragging like, you into Ross. You don't remember when Mum was a nice, nice woman? Oh, do you? so I came in this morning and she Careful, started. Ross. <laughs> yeah, I've got She's written everything. She started, you started. take holidays all the time. I was actually, Marlene, I do not. This is a myth Nath brought up on air. Now, everyone, no, I see it on Facebook. But, you're here, you're there, you're everywhere else. Marlene, Marlene. Jobs. They're very... Having time off of work. It's, I take off time off And someone work. like, oh, no, to, holiday, holiday, I actually holiday, had to walk holiday. away from it. I said, Marlene, I love you, but I can't do this anymore. I had to leave the day, room. That's what Dad says every day to her. <laughs> Without the I love you part. <laughs> the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. The trade period's done in the AFL. It's all about cricket now. You can catch the ICC Men's T20 World Cup live and ad break free during play only on Fox Sports, available on Foxtel and KO. And Brennan Julian's champing at the bit. He's had a great pre-season. He's ready to rock and roll for the cricket season. Good morning, BJ. I have had a great season. Can we just get off the footy talk, the trade? I mean, does it ever it just keeps going and going and going, doesn't it, the football? They I know. Just, it. just when you thought it was over, St Kilda went and sacked their coach. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's part and parcel. That happens at everything. I do it over here in Sydney with the NRL. I've yeah. done it with the JL. Everyone gets sacked if you're a coach. That's just goes with the job. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Hey, BJ, before we get stuck into the cricket talk, I just want your opinion on something. Um, Sean's on an apparent health Love boat. Love boat. <laughs> oh, that's no, the next question. You're the first person in Australia so to bring, out, bring that up. <laughs> so what are your thoughts? Um, okay. So Sean's on a little health kick at the moment that only seems to exist during our show and then afterwards he goes and eats what he wants. It doesn't. So Sean goes out last night for a birthday celebration and uh, he reckons that there was nothing else on the menu um, uh, except for the choice to order a giant chicken palmy. And he said that Love he's it. he, it's healthy because he chose the salad. I just had the instead, salad, BJ. I didn't have the as, chips. as well. But there were chips on the table. Do you believe? Do you believe, BJ? And mind you, this guy has little secret drive-through trips all the time that doesn't tell, he doesn't tell anyone. Do you believe that not even one chip passed his lips last night? Do you believe it? I don't. I don't believe that. But what I would ask, <laughs> Sean, is was there gravy on the palmy? Gravy? No, there was no. no gravy on the palmy. Well, that'd be more of a schnitzel. That'd, that'd be more a schnitzel. Schnitz, so, but there was cheese, a lot of cheese. Yeah, there was cheese. There was cheese. Oh, and, 
Yeah. Hey, have you been to the Schnitt House, by the way, in um, Adelaide? Adelaide? Run, I think it might be Rundle Mall. Mate, Adelaide, you're kidding, aren't you? But, but that's like 40 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, have not, I haven't been, I've been back there for a long, long time, but I am going there for the test match, so... I better pack my 1970s clothes. And yeah, that's right. I have to tell you, BJ, we, we, were the, we were the kings and queens of slagging that joint off until we went there and yeah. actually went, this is actually, Adelaide's actually really actually lovely. feels like it's better than Perth. <laughs> <laughs> I, went, I, went the, I went there for the cricket academy. I was in there for the of cricket course. academy. So, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm an Adelaide boy. Don't worry about that. Oh. I actually really liked it. It was, it was a good place, but I hadn't been back there for a long time, no. No, you need the uh, denim jacket with the uh, sheepskin collar and also <laughs> Ugg boots. And the, maybe Ooh, the Wyala yeah. trim. You know the mullet. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't like. Yeah, I don't mind that. I don't mind. That. I'll give that a run, actually. Hmm. Okay, over the cricket right now. Okay, sure. Um, well, there's been warm up games. Australia's been playing England. They played India. Um, they're really changing up their order to get things off. But I want to. I want to start yeah. with this first of all. Bj, Aaron Finch is still yeah. the captain of the T20 team. He's rubbish. He 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 <laughs> he, he he gives us a fifty every. I don't know, 20 innings and every Every time other you innings. really tee off on him, yeah. he, 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 he gets a 50. Mate, what's he doing out there? Mate, I agree. I'd, I'd take, if he gets 50 in 20 innings, that's good for him. What you, I agree with you. He, he, they should have retired him two years ago. I mean, seriously. After the last World Cup in the UAE, he probably should have finished up, but he slid up and down the order, yep. one to four. He, he sort of pushed Steve Smith out of the side, so Smith won't play at all in this World Cup. Great to have Tim David in the side. Yes. It is a concern at the top of the order, his form is faltering. And I think at the first game against New Zealand, Trent Bolt, I think he'll knock him over once again. But the key for Aaron Finch, because he's in the side and you can't sort of change that, as long as he doesn't soak up too many balls. So you never yes. know, he might be able to pull something out of the hat. But it is a bit of a concern. I agree with you. So has he got a picture of the coach with a goat or something that keeps him in the lineup, or <laughs> well, is Australian what, what was well, the coach Mac showing is, the goat? Well, <laughs> yeah, well, Mac is a good mate of his. So is George Bailey, the chairman of selectors. Um, Tony Dodemain is a Victorian as well. So the Victorians, they've got it all, all, all sewn up there. Um, yeah, right. If I come back to fight them regarding this, this board, I mean, like the how goat. they cannot get Cam Green in this team is just yes. ridiculous. Yes, add his in form, yeah. Oh, yeah, they stuck it up massively, mate. They, they, they called the squad too early, and now I tend to think, and it might be a bit harsh on Ashton Agar, but I think I'd be tapping Ashton Agar on the shoulder and saying, mate, you just stay unfit, and we're going to side Cameron Green in there. But, but, but it's I think whacking Ashton's his ankle with a stick. Said, <laughs> yeah, he, he's already come out and said, no, 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 I'm not giving my spot up. I'm fit and raring to go. So it's going to be, it, it, it's a little bit strange, isn't it? People say, why did they play him in India? Why did they make him open the batting? He's not even in the squad. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, it is bizarre. And it's bizarre that Aaron Finch is still the captain. I know he stepped down the one take. On the one day team that we're, we're seeing from Cricket Australia, um, can Dave Warner, do you, do you see that he can have redemption and be able to captain an Australian team again? I, me personally, I think he's probably too old to captain an Australian one day team and an oh. test team. I, I don't think you need to go down that track. I think there's better players out there that can do that job and, and, and move into that role. So me personally, I wouldn't have him do that. But yes, I want him to come back and captain a BBL team. That That's something that he should be able to do and should should be doing. I, I think the, the, the ban on him was, I think, too harsh. Yep. But having said that, uh, they should turn it over, make him do a BBL team. But it's only because of his age of the one-day team. There's no point bringing him into captain of one-day team, mate, because seriously, he, he might play one more season in one-day cricket. He wants to play T20 cricket. He wants to be a contractor. So I, I don't think that's the right move. How old is he? Oh, mate, he's 35. So what's, what's, the, oldest, could, what's the oldest cricketer that, that has played? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, Bobby, Bobby Simpson, Captain Australia. This is probably way too early for you guys. Bobby Simpson, Captain Australia in the, in the 80s when he was 40 to 41. He went to the, he went to the West Indies and Captain Australia. But that was uh, unique circumstances when we had no one else. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, 35, yeah. His time's just about done. Yeah. How old were you yeah, when you retired, PJ? I was actually 31. Yeah, right. I had to retire because I was crap. I was no, crap. You no, you not. were not. No, you What are you no, talking was, about? You, you came in with a big no, left-handed no, no, Yorker. I loved it. No, no, terrible, terrible. Mate, no, you smashed him over the fence yeah. when you got in the one-day team. I was watching. No, that was off my bowling. That was off my bowling. Yeah, they used to smash me over the fence. No, so no, I no. You, 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 oh. you can hit it hard. How old was Dennis Lilly when he retired? Well, he had the back injuries. Um, what, well, what was he, BJ? Dennis came back, though. Don't forget, Dennis came back and played for, West, uh, for Tasmania and Shield Cricket. So he was in the late... He was 36, 37 when he came back and played first-class yeah, right. cricket. But he retired, yeah, back injuries and 
all that sort of stuff in, in the That didn't play as many 30s. games, no. So, yes. he, you know, on his wicket tally, if he had played, you know, yes. so you're saying the sort of schedule. Le- De- Dennis Lilly had it easy. <laughs> no, I'm just well, that's what saying. The greatest of all time. Well, he can't yeah, is. Chris Gale played when he was nearly 41 <laughs> yeah. in, the, in the last World Cup for the Windies. So, look, yeah, did Brad Hogg done, play at Oh, Brad Hogg, still playing. Yeah. Still playing. Hoggy. Yeah. Well, he's, he's super fit as well. Look, Warner is super fit, but I think he's going to move into T20 cricket. But you, you don't need to captain at, at, at that age, mate. You've got to start moving on. Yeah. Hey, sure. just on the captaincy, and I'm going to let you go after this. Um, are you the captain of the commentary team? Because I know Gilly moved in there, but you'd been doing it longer. Mark no, Wallace, obviously, champion no of the way. Eels. No, Gilly, Gilly's the... Gilly's the captain. Yeah, he's, he's running the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, you ever done. get into toss a coin? <laughs> <laughs> mate, they didn't even... No, they just brushed me out the side. That's why I have to do it. They say to me, mate, BJ, you can't do the big stuff. You're going to have to do the Nova interviews and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, oh, this is called the, grate, right. the grated carrot and the sandwich, You're isn't right. it, really? Gilly like, won't talk to us yeah. anymore. <laughs> they, they get the roast beef. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, that's great. I get Pretty. all the dud jobs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and we appreciate yeah, it. Pretty shocking what you said about Dennis Lilly, though, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Love Dennis Lilly. Um, you can check out the T20 World Cup, as I said, ad break free live on Fox Sports, by law and Fox Dale and K. Good on you, BJ. Thanks for your time. Pleasure, guys. Look forward to having a chat right throughout the summer, and I'll get back to Love Boat. Yeah, no, 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 it's, it's called the short straw, isn't it, PJ? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. This is Nathan, Matt and Sean. Well, the AFLW are celebrating the Pride Round this weekend. We're catching up with AFLW GM Nicole Livingston. She's an Australian icon. Indeed. Fair to say. Good National morning to you, treasure. Nicole. Good morning. Thank you for having me on. Hi, Hello, Nick. Nicole. <laughs> well, it's great, uh, Nicole, that um, finally everyone's involved in Pride Round. We saw the West Coast Eagles over here last year. Probably saw it as a bit of an oversight. They weren't ready for it. And, oh, that um, was ridiculous. That was Not crazy. ready for it. Come on, it was on the calendar. Get a grip. <laughs> everyone's participating. Well, they've made up for it this year. They've given me, they gave me yesterday a little, um, a little badge, a lapel pin, that is the Progress Pride flag with the, the Eagles. Um, logo on it. So oh, awesome. they've oh, nice. not only produced a Guernsey, but they've yep. produced a little bash. I it's do a, like a Guernsey. It's a confusing thing, isn't it? Because we see that there are a lot of players that are against participating in a pride round having to wear a jumper. But like when you break it down, you're wearing a jumper. I mean, yes. And also you're promoting inclusion. Um, yeah. And it doesn't mean that you have to um, change your beliefs. And no. This and that. It's not like you're, you're, you're doing You any, don't have to change like your you're doing anything gay. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, it, it just, it, it's confusing um, to When me. there's resistance to it. Yes. Yeah. Because I feel like what the people that are uh, refusing to be part of, the, the ones that are, are, are making a stand, if the reverse was to happen and they were celebrating what they stand for yeah. and then... People, People were, refuse to do it. Yes, yeah. I feel like that that would be Especially really given insulted. that in AFLW, there are a lot of members of the LGBTQI yeah. community. Yeah. Like it's, you know, the, yeah. the, it's a part of the game yeah. every week, not what, just in Pride What round. do you have to say to that, Nicole? Because it must be hard to navigate that situation. Oh, look, I think it's, 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 um, it's probably an easier conversation in AFLW because you're right, uh, you know, a lot of women's football do come from the LGBTQIA plus uh, community. So part of what we want to do is make AFLW inclusive, um, not only for our playing group to be who they want to be, but also we've had lots of people since the introduction of AFLW six years ago say, I've never really felt comfortable going to an Australian football game, but now with AFLW, I do. Yeah. Um, so everybody is welcome at AFLW. And, um, you know, as many of you would know, that if you're part of a team, your uniform is your uniform and your Guernsey, mm. in this case, is your Guernsey. So it is um, representing Pride Round and something that's really important to our playing group. So we're proud of where we are. This is our third Pride Round uh, in terms of our third year. Prior to that, we just had Pride matches, but everyone, everyone's on now, so it's good. Yeah, it absolutely is good. But just getting on, I don't want to harp on this too long, but uh, we've seen that Hanine Zurika, who's stepping down for the second time in a row, those conversations, is, does it take time to be able to work her side of her story in? Because she's um, declaring because of her Muslim faith, she doesn't feel comfortable wearing the jumper. Yeah, we, we've had um, uh, various conversations with Hanine, her manager, and also with the club. Um, Tanya Hosh, who is our Executive General Manager, she's such a wise woman in our business, has led those conversations with Hanine and the club as well. Um, so, you know, the Guernsey that GWS is wearing is a pride Guernsey and Hanine has made the decision to not play this weekend, but she will be there at Henson Park for the game and she'll be supporting her teammates. She just won't be on the park this weekend. So I'm comfortable. I mean, the biggest thing about uh, this whole space is 
the conversations that it, it enables us to have. And we and that's key to being able to work through and hearing people's sides and various positions is to actually have a really robust and good conversation where everybody feels safe to actually have that conversation as well. Yeah. Uh, and was so, that the, yeah. Was that the case with Andrew Thorburn? I, I'm not sure if that was the case. And he yeah, has different I've views that we up. don't agree with. Oh, no, actually, he said that his views <laughs> yeah. aren't those views. Yes. But he's associated with an organisation. Well, heavily. Heavily, yes. yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Mm. It's, it's, but my, my thing with the whole anyone that opposes it is, and I don't care what you say, it's true, you are born the way you were born. Yeah, that's, it's not a choice. It is not a yeah. choice. Mm. Um, and you might be born into a religion, but it is a choice whether you follow a religion yeah. or not, you know? So that, that so when people are... Um, when pe- Citing religion as their reason for holding a particular view. About, against someone that is born yes. a certain way, it just, I mean, at the very core, that's mm. the thing. I want everyone to be able to have freedom of choice and all yeah. that sort of yeah. stuff. I think one of the things that we've done really well is is um, tell our stories as well. So if you do get the chance to jump onto women's.afl, mm. we've done an unfiltered series around um, the International Coming Out Day uh, and some of our players and some of our community have told their story around that. So I think with our Pride Rounds, and we had Indigenous Round earlier in the year as well, it does actually give us the opportunity to use AFLW and Australian football as a vehicle to not only tell stories but to normalise things. Mm. Uh, and, and foremost, we're normalising that women do play football which is at an elite level, which has not been uh, always on the table. I tell you what, though, yeah. I think we've spoken to you uh, before, Nicole, but uh, all the girls playing these days, they oh, are yes. so pumped. And yeah, the dads right. are getting involved at the grassroots yeah. level. I'm loving it. When you um, see girls playing kick-to-kick kick with their dads down at the park, you know, things. Have, awesome. that's a big change. My, my daughter this year, Nicole, I'm going to give her a pump-up. She, she got the leading goal kicker for her team. And, and I hardly kicked a goal in my I was career. Say. But <laughs> she kicked six, <laughs> and that was enough to win a trophy God the size, it. you know, God like a metre yeah. high. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Her like, motto unreal. is, what would dad not do? Well, we do have fun. The daughter, so I'm looking forward to that playing. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure if that'll happen, but I, if it did, I'd be the <laughs> but, proudest but man. But you're quashing her netball dream, so it's still yeah, alive. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. There is some big games though for our West Australian teams over here. So West Coast Eagles are playing Geelong, and um, Fremantle are playing Collingwood on Sunday. So we've got some big games to look forward to. Are you getting along to some games this weekend? Yeah, I'm going to a double header uh, in Victoria. I'm actually sitting outside of the Mars Stadium right now in Ballarat, just making sure that the water damage isn't too bad from the yes. floods that we have. But um, I think the ground, uh, it's up on higher level, so it's fine. So we've got the Bulldogs playing St Kilda uh, here this weekend. Uh, I'll go to Henson Park up in Sydney as well uh, to have a look at that game uh, with Hawthorne playing GWS. And then I'll see three games at, uh, at Princess Park. So... My dance card is full this week, yeah, but is. I will get to WA very soon. We've got um, three more rounds to go, so uh, I will get there in the last couple of rounds. Was that weather ridiculous yesterday for you guys in Melbourne? <laughs> I've actually stolen my husband's four-wheel drive uh, big truck because I yeah. thought, how am I going to get through the roads if there's water on the road? Yeah. So don't tell him. He doesn't know I've taken it, but we'll figure <laughs> it out soon. It's really um, – it, it's <laughs> full on, um, Nicole, because over here when – we see flood after flood yeah, for yeah, years no, no. now, and yep. we don't get any of that. Like, mm-hmm. uh, so yeah, it's just a foreign concept to us. So yeah, yeah the ground's okay. So that's my most important thing yeah. right now. We don't yeah. have to get super focused out or anything like that. It looks all right. Great, oh, the great. Super <laughs> Nicole, really appreciate your time this morning. Um, AFLW, you're Jim, doing Nicole a great Livingston. job. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Mm. Thank you very much. Thanks for your support. Nathan, Nat, and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.